we all got together and we were like throwing names around like who should we get and then um, I was just saying, hey, we should get George. We really were big fans of George when he was in Monstrosity. We knew of his abilities in Monstrosity. We've heard him sing. We've seen him live. He had a great presence and all that. I knew Rob. Rob played some shows at Monstrosity, and Rob was in Cannibal. And then when he decided to get rid of Barnes, Rob had Alex call me. We called up George. We had him come down and try it out. Chris was still on tour. This is Alex from Cannibal Corpse. What's going on, man? And I'm like, oh, hey, dude, what's going on? I was totally surprised by that. I just said, hold on for a second, and I put the phone down, just like, because I knew there's no reason he would have ever called me f except for that. George was number one candidate. We were like, if we can get him, then the search stops there. That's the guy we want. I hung the phone. I was like, yeah. I just started fucking yelling, and my mother comes like, what's wrong? And I'm like, there's nothing wrong, Mom. You don't even know what just happened to me. He came down for an audition, and they liked what he was doing, and... It was kind of a bit difficult because he was in another band, and that's always kind of a tough situation. How are they going to feel about us asking their singer to join? Rob Barrett was living with me at the time, too, so he's kind of right there in the mix of it all. George was like, yeah, Cannibal asked me to join, and I told him I'd do it. I knew I was going to do it. The second that he said, hey, this is Alex from Cannibal Corpse, I knew I was doing it. Bam. I look at it like he left one killer band to join another killer band that maybe gave him a little more opportunity. We ended up getting Jason Avery from Eulogy. I was walking down the street in Ebor, and I ran into Grinder, and he told me that he's singing for Cannibal now. Then a block up the road, I ran into Lee Harrison, and he told me George quit. So I was like, hey, I'll do it, you know. <laughs> just kind of fell in his lap. We did a lot of touring, and we built it right back up. So ultimately, it did, you know, it's like whatever. But we still get the whoa. What's up with George? How you got your friends with George? Whoa! It's been like 15 years now. <laughs> Monstrosity was just really good, straight ahead Florida death metal. Some of the best at the time to come out. There's old Lee Lavender, Mark Van Erp, Jason Goebel, me about a thousand pounds later, and John Rubin. Imperial Doom. It's the first album I ever did. George had kind of been recruited from a band called Corpse Grinder in Maryland. I did two demos of Corpse Grinder. I did their 1993 demo after I'd already been in Monstrosity. Their singer left and I went home and then I did a demo with them. I'm the one who gave him the name Corpse Grinder. Who like, because we were like, let's get that guy from Corpse Grinder. Where's Corpse Grinder? Let's get him down here. Where's this Corpse Grinder guy? He was really the perfect fit because we're getting faster, we're getting heavier. And he's just, you know, he can sing a million words a minute. First backlash was from the label. Uh, Brian Flagel just thought we were the biggest idiots in the world. They wouldn't tell me, because they knew that I was going to be furious. We were in the studio, and it was a disaster when we told Slagle and Faley, I mean, they're ready to fucking kill us. After it was all done and everything was all finished, and they said, well, we, Chris is out of the band. And I go, well, wait a minute, what do you mean he's out of the band? I think the label was a bit nervous and maybe not particularly happy with our decision at first. My God, you're just like, where's the knife? Let me just, you know, I, I need to cut my wrist. I need to, you know, go turn on the car and shut the garage door. They were a little skeptical, I think. The last thing you want to do at a point when you're at a, at a peak is to change singers, because that's a, that's a huge change. It's a big shock, right? I mean, for them, they're thinking, how the hell are we going to do this? We've got a record half in the can. And we've kicked out our singer, the face of the band. But the band was saying, look, we don't give a crap anymore. We don't care if we sell one record. That's how strongly they felt. What am I going to say? I mean, it's their career. I mean, there's nothing, you can't force somebody to do something. People were concerned about it outside of our band, but in the band, we weren't worried at all because we knew it was going to be good because we got the guy that we thought was the best man for the job. Honestly, it never was a question of George being able to sing the songs, ever. I mean, right. It was a question of, could the band go on without the face of Chris Barnes and Cannibal Corpse? Losing a singer as important as Chris Barnes is life-threatening to a band. When I heard that Barnes left the band, I think I about almost fell over my, off my off the bar stool. I think we're all told me, like, what the fuck? I didn't think they'd be able to replace him. He was like their sound. That was Cannibal Corpse. He deserved a lot of credit for getting the Cannibal Corpse image out there and starting a new niche, really, vocally and Lyrically. I think everybody thought, well, he's the singer, he's the leader. What are we going to do? What, what are we going to be like? Would they now just become another brutal, fast band that was faceless in the crowd of thousands? A vocalist is an important part of the band, but he's 20% of the band in our case. We're the same musicians, the guy that wrote all the music since day one. We're not going to allow our fate to be decided by changing a vocalist. No way. You know, we worked way 
too hard on the music to let a vocalist make or break it. People always questioned that decision. People always looked at it, but it's turned out that it was the best, it was the right decision for both entities. Chris has gone on to have his own successful band, and that's great. I'm feeling good where I'm at right now. <laughs> but I like where I came from, too. I'm very proud of everything I did. I stand by it, you know, and it's really held the test of time as far as good death metal goes. I think that it'll continue to be thought of as one of the purest moments in death metal history, those first records I was involved with. <laughs>